проснуться сегодня. We are going to hold two powerful sessions. We are to be divided into two groups, group one and group two. Uh, this is the expert who stands next to us. That's Dmitry Zitzer. We wanted Dima to join us. Last year he came to us for the first time and uh, we invited him for the second time. He didn't mind. Dim, I think that uh, teaching is an art. He works as part of the art, psychology, pedagogy. The group which works with Dima moves to the next uh, Rio room. And this is the group which is to work on the first session there. Over here, we have 37 persons, up to Natalia Krajnova. Я здесь, куда мне идти? Я попрошу всех мужчин, которые есть в зале, помочь на следующем кофе-брейке с, с изменением пространства здесь, потому что Дима работает без столов, без границ, и надо будет быстренько эту аудиторию перестроить.
Доброе утро всем. Надеюсь, все вы с Парис хорошо, в хорошем настроении и готовы к работе. Настя уже нас настроила на работу. Я думаю, мы начнем с того, что мы не успели сделать вчера. Так как я сказала, вчера будет сегодня с утра время на обсуждение проектов, на ваши реакции, на проекты, о которых вы много услышали. Как вы видели, вчера мы торопились, я тоже там немножко торопила, торопила участников, но у меня не было сил прорвать этот рассказ о, о их работе. Вы увидели, что очень много было сделано. Вначале, когда я просила представить свои проекты, я попросила обратить внимание или фокусировать внимание, какие есть результаты этих проектов. Это главное, потому что преимущество этого метода – это то, что он ведет к изменениям. Он дает возможность почувствовать участникам проекта, что что-то изменилось. Не что-то изменилось, а точнее они повлияли на изменения, они достигли изменений. Изменения, которые происходят после выполнения проекта, это можно исследовать. И вы все знаете, как оценивать проекты. Я хочу эм, открыть дискуссию над проектами. Э, показываю вам такие уровни оценки, которые многим уже э, известны. Э, мы по этим критериям. There are five levels uh, of assessment. Uh, by Kir Patrick, according to this approach, after the end of the project, we see the response of our participants to the project. And we saw children at the photographs who were smiling, dancing, they were happy. And the same was true about the presentations. And this is the indicator of our success. But we are also interested in the educational results, which we had in mind when we started our planning. Increase of knowledge, acquiring skills. That's the second level of assessment. We see uh, what changes took place. If people learn something new, acquired new skills, that's very good. But they would want to use them uh, practically because we want participants of our projects to change their opinion, to take some new steps which didn't take place before <coughs> because they missed something they definitely missed something so the third level of assessment is how behavior of our uh, students change what our children do after the project I like these two photographs the drop falls down and there is a circle. The circle is the results in the end of the project. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. The circles grow wider and wider and that's level number four, influence. What happens uh, after the project when formally it is over because it has the beginning and it has its ending. Uh, but things change in the hearts and minds of our participants. That's how the project develops, how it evolves. Uh, usually this stage is not checked by us. 
well because to fill certain questionnaire to respond to questions it's difficult the project is over and we uh, sigh with relief the project was difficult but it's over and we see good results and actually later we do not check uh, after one year or two years how it influenced our institution how it influenced our school our local community and uh, I have to tell you that projects change educational environment they change your school as an institution so it's actually very important to see how the project uh, impacts the situation at later say it's difficult but it's very important to have this kind of monitoring or checking what happens after two years and now level number five which we uh, usually forget this is the efficiency which is you compare the results and expenses that is uh, very difficult um, to calculate uh, well how to compare money with the results because the results may be absorbed within five years or ten years it is education this is a long-term project and it's very difficult to you know to measure it now you may ask questions which you failed uh, to ask uh, yet but considering the fact that we see the results because we do projects not just to make a check uh, we did this and we did that but these are project activities uh, but uh, we actually whatever we do we do uh, to achieve results so we have teams from Stavropol from Rostov from Yaroslavl our Volgograd team uh, went to another room you may ask all sorts of questions now please the floor is yours if you have no questions uh, well, maybe you are confused by my introduction. I will ask a representative of, a, uh, of each team to make a certain reflection. What is the influence of my project? I understand that not all projects are over but how can you assess the influence of your project uh, uh, ruminate on the results and uh, the influence of the project hello colleagues I thought that uh, other projects uh, would start uh, which operate uh, for a long time I am from Yaroslavl and we are in the project not for a long time yet and we are in the middle of the process and uh, of course we are going to be in the process on and on and on because this process is not ending it's continuum but this image with circles 
uh, which Marjana told us, and we meet each other every three months. So during one of the seminars, this image was introduced. I remember it very well. I liked this image as an idea of the project about the drop and the circles. Participants do change in the first place. And this is an obvious achievement. Uh, but when participants change, they change everything around them. So we have so many new people this time. New schools, uh, masters who study now on this program now. Additional education, apparatus on children's rights. And when we start uh, doing something, people are interested in uh, our idea and they develop the, the projects of their own. Constantin uh, represents the apparatus on uh, children's rights. He probably he's in the next room. And he has several ideas to establish a, a competition and uh, this more and more people are attracted into the process. And uh, responsible people, mm, they have or ombudsmen on, human, on children's rights, they have great capacities and they are going to be involved and we are going to introduce new plans for schools. And we think now what kind of format we are going to use So this is actually the result. I mean, this is the circles. I mean, more and more people get involved. And we try to work with mass media. We understand that mass media in itself, it would only transmit information. This is not knowledge, and this is not practice. And that's not skills, but you have to start with something. And you need mass media. And you have to demonstrate uh, our results uh, in the mass media and this would be enlargement of our circles the choice of a target group uh, is very important for the length of the project uh, of course school ombudsman uh, would be influenced too if you work with mass media you are right, this is just information, but this information would reach someone and someone would uh, change his point of view or his way of thinking. You don't know about it, but we also influence the continuation of our project. Thank you, Tatiana. Olga, maybe it is too early to talk about influence. The project has just been finished. And a couple of sub-projects still go on. As to the influence, you may see the following. A few words about teachers we worked with on this project. Who 
who were involved in seminars, in trainings, who coordinated some activities in schools, who worked in the working groups themselves. So their satisfaction is also our influence, because some approaches were quite new for them. This uh, is important that we managed to see different approaches uh, in dealing with children. That's important from a methodological point of view. Very important. Uh, to develop new sphere of knowledge, I mean civil education. It is easy to understand new terms, uh, new notions, and they uh, become practical for teachers. Our uh, participants and teachers, uh, those who were involved in trainings, they all wish to continue this kind of activity, to continue seminars and trainings. As far as Stavropol Krai is concerned, uh, we were interested in socially oriented projects. So through the social activity we moved forward the idea of civil education. So teachers are interested in continuation of this work, which is uh, an achievement in itself. This is the result, the influence of the project. Thanks. Now, Galina. Yes, I remember how you started your presentation. You said that we grew up ourselves. First of all, you have to speak about uh, oneself, because we are involved from the very beginning, and it's better to start assessing uh, from oneself. I think it becomes our daily practice when you cannot act otherwise, and that's extremely important for me. This is the state when all the objective reality is considered through the prism of values or knowledge which you acquired as two objective parameters. Well, involvement, we attract uh, more and more schools. We attract uh, schools uh, in villages. We hold seminars with children, students, and teachers. Uh, and this can be assessed. This component is easily determined. Now, uh, these people better understand the documents, that they know their rights, they know their responsibilities. As far as values are concerned, it, it's really difficult with it, because how can you measure it? Uh, you measure it in your everyday life and social practice, and probably it is easier for teachers who see these young uh, people every day, I mean school children, or a school administrator who works with teachers, so he can uh, monitor uh, the development, of the involvement of the situation. I 
thought of holding a number of lessons in school to increase literacy, legal literacy. This is the ninth grade. I have done that. And then I thought mm, that I was emotionally satisfied by what I got from this project. And then I had a certain change in behavior which caused uh, new activities not supported by any institution. So this came later. Yes, this is influence, of course. It is also very important uh, that one of the risks which we faced that not everybody considered the idea of civil education in the same way. Some of the schools were against it. Their response was negative. So one of the project influences was to see who is ready to receive this new information and who is not. Receive, conceive. at the uh, schools uh, and great activity took place even before we started talking about civil education all sorts of events project activity uh, but it was not well organized those were events for events activity for the sake of activity now there is a content And that's very important because I have seen lots of changes in myself for the last two years, personal changes. Even when you are very busy, you still find time to work with schools because you understand the importance and you work with students. You use this new knowledge when you develop new courses. You uh, change methodology uh, while introducing new courses. I thank colleagues for showing their personal attitude towards these projects. I am a sociologist. So next to these five items, and there is a basic understanding which is related to institutional changes. In Yaroslav, they introduced master's course. This is a structural change in the university activity in uh, Rostov Oblast. We introduced the system of school ombudsman in 2008, uh, but it was not completed, unfortunately. Well, each school has its own ombudsman, and uh, he is independent from school administrator, uh, from local educational department, that's good uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand he doesn't know what he has to do, he is a kind of a misfit and uh, nobody actually deals with him or her because this activity should be organized, which is difficult for several reasons because it is not supported uh, financially, it's all volunteering activity. For ombudsmen in oblast, uh, they cannot hold uh, people to deal with schools from the center. So, uh, you know, uh, what we are doing 
has some uh, nature of institutional changes. So if uh, in each bar, in each locality, ombudsmen will have their own websites and if uh, they coordinate their efforts and so that we could join them. And uh, we will try to uh, persuade uh, um, local authorities uh, to uh, adopt such a scheme. And uh, our intention is that uh, um, uh, ombudsman should stay independent, but there should be some uh, opportunity to discuss the situation, uh, whether it is on web or some other um, platforms. So um, it, it means that we should go beyond uh, one individual schools and uh, uh, connect their activities. But uh, anyway, we <coughs> are making a uh, progress, people are being connected, uh, and all those who work in this area can see each other and uh, they uh, suddenly realize that uh, ombudsmen are not supervised, uh, they are free and they should uh, um, uh, show their own initiatives. So again, it's about the uh, drop uh, of water and rings on the water. The other activity that uh, uh, we also pursue is about the training system. And uh, we uh, introduced uh, uh, some subjects uh, into the uh, bachelor's program. And uh, uh, we think uh, it was a successful uh, effort since uh, um, it's the first time when we uh, uh, offer uh, a spe specified uh, and dedicated training for those uh, subjects of uh, social knowledge and uh, normally uh, it's uh, historians at schools, teachers of history at schools who take those subjects but uh, uh, they view it as their side job and uh, perhaps they do not concentrate on that very much. So uh, our approach uh, suggests uh, that uh, uh, they should be uh, specifically trained uh, teachers who would take those uh, social uh, subjects. Uh, we understand that we are only uh, at the beginning um, of the road, it's a long way, and um, um, my university is also changing, and those uh, who come here from universities, they know that uh, we are um, revising uh, our curricula and uh, um, we are working on cost reductions so and uh, uh, that means that fa we face a lot of risks in those changes uh, it doesn't mean that we are afraid of those changes but uh, um, uh, it's a market environment and uh, uh, from the standpoint of uh, a market environment Teaching uh, social subjects uh, is not uh, very much uh, uh, profitable and uh, mm, we understand that it's a, a costly thing, it's uh, like uh, diamonds uh, for those who live in the basement. So this is a risk area and uh, although we try to mitigate those risks. And finally, I would like to say that uh, uh, my colleagues were quite uh, right when they said that uh, those interactive methodologies uh, uh, for teaching have been introduced both for class and out of class uh, uh, work and students, I should say, are impacted by those uh, changes. Um, uh, students, uh, um, uh, as we said, can really uh, uh, have or get some um, on the job experience uh, if they uh, try to practice uh, those uh, methodologies at school, both in class and out of class. Uh, personally, personally, I'm supervising uh, a group of students and I can say that those changes uh, have the nature of institutional changes. and. Uh, uh, 
Yesterday I told you that uh, we opened uh, a US-Russian program, educative uh, program for uh, the students, uh, and uh, it's funded uh, by the St. Louis University of the United States, and uh, the US side uh, helped us uh, in this endeavor and uh, uh, the US c uh, counterparts say that uh, Russian culture is very rich and you had Dostoevsky, you had Tolstoy, uh, there's a great Russian belly so uh, your students uh, are supposed to be very sp developed spiritually and we want uh, Russian students perhaps uh, through online interaction uh, could influence uh, uh, US students and um, uh, he wants uh, um, uh, our students to be reflexive so that uh, the United States uh, students uh, can uh, follow suit and, uh, and uh, uh, another uh, partner, a uh, US partner for the uh, uh, Moscow School who is uh, Mr. Gerald and he wrote his uh, thesis uh, um, uh, about Russian culture and uh, um, I cannot, I'm not quite sure what uh, our students can contribute uh, if uh, not all of them even read Dostoevsky. And I uh, try to introduce some uh, reflexive uh, methodologies into teaching. And uh, um, I opened uh, uh, a prominent uh, person, Bakhtin, for them. And uh, I can see uh, what's happening to those students. Some of them uh, went uh, to the United States already uh, for culture, for students' exchange programs. And uh, uh, I can see that they t uh, students uh, uh, participate in that program. They are trying to uh, realize who um, those uh, students are and uh, think uh, it's a great effort and um, uh, it would help uh, um, the students to um, um, uh, get rid of uh, stereotypes and it's a two-way uh, traffic. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, you really made a very interesting observation and it's very important. Uh, yesterday I said that uh, sometimes you uh, need to come to a halt, look back and see what you have done. And uh, in your remarks I can see that uh, what you are doing um, does make sense. And uh, it's something that uh, really uh, promotes uh, internal motivation. Uh, people said here that it should be um, free uh, on a voluntary basis, but I think if uh, somebody sees uh, some sense in something that they are doing, uh, well, I don't think they need some more um, benefits or advantages. And uh, the other factor of uh, motivation is autonomy and uh, think that in the framework of your projects uh, you are changing things and you are changing yourself. And uh, I think you are uh, succeeding. Thank you very much for your um, contribution. I think the, uh, what you said, you add, uh, uh, add something to that uh, uh, presentation made um, last night and uh, we were short of time and uh, you couldn't uh, uh, tell us all the details now we have an opportunity uh, to learn those details okay thank you very much and it's time now to uh, move to the second part of the uh, session in your agendas and uh, here on the slide uh, you can see that uh, we're going to discuss uh, the uh, topic of uh, quality in the system of education. Uh, I can explain what I mean by quality in the uh, system of education. There is a general reflection um, and uh, it implies that the system of education is designed uh, to train people uh, to live independently. It's also designed to shape personalities, but uh, the success uh, can be determined by the quality of uh, educative uh, uh, services. 
well, that's the first time I can see that I'm uh, using the word educative uh, services. It's something that we borrowed from business. And uh, in my country, in Poland, uh, this term was introduced uh, quite recently, back in 1998. We didn't use that uh, term before. Now, uh, educative uh, service is quite uh, common now, I, I, although I'm not certain that you are using that term. So, but uh, if it is a service, we want it to be uh, the service of good quality. Similarly, uh, as services of a hairdresser or a tailor. But what do we mean? by quality in the system of education. Just uh, uh, some uh, historical uh, background in uh, uh, 1998 we introduced in Poland the system of evaluation of quality in schools. Uh, well, uh, it took us long to study uh, th those uh, aspects and uh, we carried out some training courses and uh, mm, uh, we should really see what quality means. Uh, one can find uh, various definitions uh, on that account. Uh, if I asked uh, uh, what quality meant for you, you would uh, probably give me your own uh, mm, mm, uh, definitions, but uh, my favorite is that of uh, uh, Mr. Deming, and uh, he says that quality is something that uh, uh, satisfies and even admires uh, customers. Uh, satisfaction is the minimal uh, level and the admiration is the top level of quality. And again, there is another uh, strange word for us. It is the client. Uh, uh, for schools, I think it's uh, students or pupils who are clients, customers, but it's also parents, uh, local authorities, local community and uh, teachers and staff uh, of uh, a particular establishment. They are also customers. I'm not certain if we should put uh, qu um, quotation marks uh, uh, for the word services, but probably it's not necessary. Uh, many schools are building their own uh, systems of quality. And what uh, do those systems have? First of all, they specify what is to be done by whom, when, what materials, what documents are to be used, and uh, it also specifies the uh, methods of uh, supervision. That's the process that uh, we are not launching, but uh, it's process uh, that we are su supervising and evaluate. And uh, it's also the table of organization uh, uh, describing and defining responsibilities. I uh, will give you just one example of the system of uh, quality adopted for the education system. And uh, we borrowed that uh, uh, system for Poland. And based on that, uh, based on those principles, many quality systems in schools uh, were established. It's uh, that famous uh, TQM, or Total Quality Management. Those uh, who are involved in management uh, perhaps are very well aware of that theory. So uh, there are seven principles, uh, and the uh, first is um, uh, customization, and that is focus on customer. And uh, in our case, it's uh, the, foc uh, the focus on uh, students. Sometimes uh, teachers <laughs> say that uh, school could be a wonderful th uh, th place uh, to work if uh, there were no uh, children. Um, <coughs> so, but certainly the focus is to be placed on uh, children. Uh, the principle uh, of the establishment is to be not just a formal leader, a leader that uh, um, fulfills uh, some instructions and orders from top. That person is to be a true uh, leader and uh, that person has uh, uh, their own objectives. But uh, for a leader to achieve something, uh, 
uh, it's necessary to have experienced uh, staff and teachers so that uh, they would uh, be his or uh, her proponents sharing uh, those um, objectives. And the objectives uh, that are stipulated and set forth uh, for a particular school. Those objectives are to be their common objectives uh, because everybody is involved. And it's also the systemic approach to management when everybody knows their responsibilities and uh, uh, when they act uh, um, in the scope of those responsibilities and authority. And uh, for those who would like to improve quality, uh, they need to uh, continuously introduce uh, modifications and innovations. You can never say that uh, there is some top level of quality once it is reached. You can stop doing anything. We are leaders and uh, we will stay leaders. Those who uh, stop the process of development uh, are immediately pushed back. So there is always room for improvement and innovations, modifications are the principles of the TQM model. And uh, the model uh, uh, needs uh, outside partners and uh, schools, uh, perhaps uh, ha have uh, a lot of partners and uh, individuals. Uh, um, that uh, partner helps the school to enhance and approve uh, the quality of teaching, knowledge, uh, logistics. So uh, external partners are also very important. And there is no doubt that uh, in this particular case, uh, school is responsible for uh, before the community, before the public, since it's a public institution. School uh, um, does not uh, work for its own purposes. School is to be uh, an open establishment. Uh, those are the principles. So, uh, if you apply those principles to the system of education and uh, try to define the quality in the system of education, you may uh, say that it's uh, something that accounts for the quality of teaching, uh, upbringing, um, quality of staff, uh, quality of educative uh, programs, uh, quality of logistics. So all the factors um, uh, have an impact on the quality of the education process in general. We can uh, go uh, into further details of uh, quality because for each customer of the school uh, it may mean something different. It's uh, one thing for children, that's another thing for uh, parents and for authorities it's something else as well as for teachers. I don't think uh, it's proper to uh, specify um, those things uh, um, in very much details but uh, if uh, you are building a system of quality we should at least uh, ask all those groups, children, parents, uh, authorities, community, and uh, understand what quality means to them. And that's exactly what I've done. And uh, I have that on my slides, but I skip them for the sake of time. And uh, let us uh, see what uh, criteria of quality in civic education could be. I would like uh, to ask you uh, uh, to uh, go beyond uh, um, the general um, uh, topics and focus on civic education in schools. Let's see what uh, it means for us. I mean, the uh, civic education of high quality. And uh, what is important here? What uh, are the priorities here? Uh, when we try to evaluate quality of uh, civic education, what uh, do we have to focus on? I think uh, curricular. Uh, well, uh, we already discussed the topic of uh, subject-to-subject -subject relations when a student can open a dialogue with a teacher offering their own visions. That's good for education process. 
Um, apart from the um, um, pro uh, education process, uh, there is also a subject, subject relation between um, a teacher and uh, staff or administrators. It's uh, when a teacher is involved in some organizational effort so that all uh, decisions of management are taken with the participation of a teacher. It's also the subject to subject relations between teachers and uh, parents. And uh, yesterday we already heard that story that uh, uh, parents uh, can uh, provide legal advice, can provide some other um, extra uh, knowledge, and um, that's for the school. But uh, uh, speaking of the education of uh, service, then if uh, a student understands uh, uh, everything about uh, dignity, rights, uh, and uh, 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 respect for others who have uh, similar rights, uh, tolerance, it uh, should be something like air. You breathe uh, air, but you don't notice that. And you notice it only when it disappears. Thank you very much for um, that uh, um, very good uh, input. Uh, so we now I think we have put, uh, um, drawn a picture of what uh, we have. I would like to offer you a short exercise, and you should work in group. Let's see how we can split. Uh, so. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, to split into uh, four or five uh, groups. There are about 40 people people here in the room, so we can uh, split into uh, groups uh, um, of eight, uh, seven or eight persons. Let's uh, really split. And. Um, I would like you to consider such uh, uh, areas of quality, such as the uh, base of education, curricular objectives, purposes, content, methodologies of teaching, uh, number four, teacher, person who teaches, who teaches in uh, civic education. And uh, finally, it's uh, training materials, textbooks, uh, manuals, and other th things. And uh, since uh, um, we, it will be impossible to um, see all the spheres, I would like the first group uh, to, uh, to take uh, cu curricula. And uh, that's uh, curricula is for everybody. Uh, but the first group uh, base. Uh, uh, Second, uh, um, curriculum, uh, so, uh, logistics, uh, training uh, materials. So, in this on this table, you can see those areas and standards and indicators. And I, I would like you to think of that and to uh, try to uh, identify a standard for a particular area and how we can benefit f from that. Just one or two things. I would like to uh, uh, remind you of the fact that uh, those posters uh, uh, of the flip chart uh, behind the screen uh, contains a lot of information. Um, and uh, on the first night here, uh, you uh, provided some information for us uh, why you cannot be pleased with everything we have in school. Actually, uh, some people, uh, many people, uh, showed their satisfaction with uh, a lot of activities, uh, specifically the projects. But uh, we um, would try to determine the standards of quality uh, in two areas uh, for each group. Uh, one is uh, curricula, and the other will be chosen by you. So please split into five groups.
Уважаемые коллеги, давайте завершим работу в группах. Dear colleagues, let us complete the work in groups. I understand it's not much time, but I am glad that you started thinking along these lines. That was my goal, for you to start thinking. you to do it one by one. We still have 10 minutes and no more than that. Um, we uh, divided into groups. Some of the groups discuss the basics uh, for education methods of teaching and the teaching materials. So we shall start with the program. All the groups discussed in the program What should be the program of uh, quality in the area of education? One group should uh, give us just one item. What should be a program of quality? Just one item in the area of uh, civil education. A unit. Uh, values and uh, human rights as a backbone of this course at each state. So you mean general approach, uh, you involve all the teachers, all the subjects to achieve the goal of civil education. The second group, who, yes, Uh, the purpose of education should be just one and the same, and we have to understand it as something big. Development conditions uh, for uh, development of proper competences, and then these tasks uh, would be reached through the content. We have a goal of creating condition for development of civil competence, then our tasks will be uh, develop knowledge uh, about civil education. Then uh, you take certain interests to this area of activity, and then you set up new skills to help us in our practical activity. And of course, we have to organize specific actions, and then uh, you have divided uh, goals of education into three spheres: knowledge, skills, and practice, rather practical values. This is very important. Uh, you need a balance between item one and item two, because sometimes they say that the system of education passes knowledge, and you need a balance when you develop skills. Thank you. Next group. We've had 
a specialist from Europe, and he helped us a lot. And uh, we have a very interesting item, dependence on the program on psychological age. For instance, if you are eight, you need one level of knowledge uh, of understanding civil problems. Um, but uh, when you are 18, you face different problems and you have different goals. What indicators you uh, can use here uh, control or monitoring of knowledge from teacher from teachers this is formal on the other hand uh, a child should understand the material he studied you have to conceive it through your conscience uh, which implies uh, informal uh, communication between uh, parents teachers and school children this is very important factor and the program you say should be correlated uh, with psychological development of a child uh, considering his age there are uh, programs of civil education which are aimed at a primary school for instance and that happens you also uh, take uh, into consideration this kind of uh, psychological factor, age-related. Okay, group four. Собираются. Uh, well, uh, uh, there were uh, two different components but we generalized and we we say that interaction between theory and practice this is our chief refrain which is a must because all theoretical knowledge should be supported by practical implementation Thank you. Uh, so you are making a point about the balance uh, between practice and theory. It's true, in order to uh, generate practical skills, uh, more time is needed. And uh, once you try to um, define the content for the program, it is to be accounted for. Next, uh, your group. Uh, uh, consider the uh, training or learning base. Uh, so what do you think of that? So if it is about the uh, civic education of high quality. Good morning. First of all, it's uh, the conditions, the environment uh, that are created for teachers to work and to educate uh, pupils. So those uh, uh, conditions um, um, are to be in line with human rights. And logistics is uh, the other com component. So what is it is, is it supposed to be like? Well, uh, there should be the um, environment of free access, even if, uh, barrier-free access uh, if uh, there are uh, uh, children f with some physical disabilities so uh, it is to be uh, done so that those children can visit any school at any age and in the classrooms it's uh, the uh, moving uh, tables uh, chairs uh, flip charts markers blackboards uh, some uh, uh, recreative uh, uh, conditions, some uh, furniture, music, uh, flowers, uh, bathrooms, uh, comfortable bathrooms, uh, uh, cafeterias with a, a menu, some uh, tra free uh, textbooks, uh, some movies, cartoons. Thank you uh, very much for that addition. Uh, we uh, already discussed uh, the fact that uh, you cannot teach citizenship, uh, democracy, human rights if we only lecture. We are supposed to create a democratic environment and uh, 
and uh, music can really impact that climate and uh, uh, the conditions uh, should be such that uh, uh, dignity is not uh, humiliated and uh, school is, uh, uh, and schools they should have uh, respect for uh, private life and it's very important for the civic education of high quality and the next uh, group uh, um, uh, your um, discussion was on, uh, about leaders, about uh, the quality of teachers, skills of teachers, so please. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, the basic requirements that any teacher has to meet are still valid. So teachers are supposed uh, to teach uh, they should uh, uh, trigger a desire to be educated and uh, teach also practical skills. So in this backdrop, we think it's important uh, for a teacher to possess a high level of uh, communications uh, culture, a high level of empathy, openness, uh, uh, um, initiatives, uh, active uh, positions, uh, civic positions, as uh, well as the high level of reflexion and uh, we also tried to uh, think of uh, indicators uh, uh, there are some standard indicators uh, performance based indi indicators uh, out of class life but uh, besides we believe that uh, for a good teacher uh, they need to be uh, uh, um, professionally mobile, um, they need to be part to professional communities, uh, they are to be uh, ready to promote and uh, share their experience and they should be ready to continuously uh, improve their skills and qualifications. Perhaps uh, uh, that, that's it. And, uh, uh, thank you very much. Once we speak of uh, the teacher for civic education, I would add from myself that uh, on those levels uh, where we discuss uh, relevant events, I think this teacher uh, assumes um, a responsibility to explain to children what is happening around. The teacher is to be prepared to hear various opinions. Uh, they should be ready that uh, a student may have a different opinion. Uh, they should not expect that uh, uh, all students will think uh, along the same line. And uh, uh, the teacher should, is to be prepared to cope with the level of emotions uh, so that uh, uh, emotions will not uh, make harm to classes. And uh, teacher is supposed to uh, be able to see what's happening around and to and uh, if teachers uh, have some examples uh, from their own experience about civic uh, positions, it's uh, great. And uh, the teacher is to be the carrier of those values a teacher is telling uh, his students. If uh, children uh, hear something uh, in class, but uh, then uh, they would see uh, the teacher behaving different way, well, it kills uh, our effort. And therefore, um, uh, uh, high professionalism, a high morality, uh, should be uh, the integral part of uh, the teaching. Your group, group three, you discussed the method methodologies. Uh, yes, and the uh, first, uh, uh, our first method that tops the list is the um, some enlightenment courses for teachers and parents and parents' meetings. Uh, more details about indica indicator, uh, indicators. For instance, uh, um, we need to measure the involvement of parents, and it uh, certainly depends on the methods uh, to hold uh, uh, meetings with parents. If you hold uh, mm, uh, such meetings not uh, uh, once a month, but every month, um, well, we will be able to show those parents that some success uh, has been made and uh, some uh, uh, objectives uh, uh, have been achieved. That's about parents, and so as for teachers, uh, it's their competence. Uh, they should be indicators measuring their competence. 
um, teaching based on situations is another theme and <coughs> so when um, at uh, the lessons and class some relevant uh, uh, issues are discussed with students in the format of a discussion and it makes it possible for uh, students uh, to do those things in practice. And uh, here, I think, is the response of uh, children and uh, will be the indicator. Bullet 3, uh, involvement of NGOs. Those who can help to adjust uh, um, uh, the structure of uh, teaching. And perhaps business uh, businesses can also be involved uh, and as for indicators, uh, it could be some summer uh, schools and some uh, wallpapers, uh, um, updates uh, on the web. Uh, uh, so that's uh, kind of a wallpaper only on, on the web. And the fourth uh, bullet, uh, it's uh, the um, uh, work with uh, uh, credits. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, organization of uh, credits communities. Those uh, uh, um, children who um, uh, joined uh, uh, or entered uh, uh, universities and being students uh, of higher education, um, they would be in a better position to see what really helped them at school. And uh, um, with that, they can uh, really um, shape new um, uh, curricula, new methodologies. Uh, well, uh, it's a very broad approach. Uh, uh, you included parents and credits, but our task is uh, to focus on the uh, educative process inside a school. You mentioned uh, something about discussion um, on the job. Uh, 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 approaches. It's uh, really the methodology, and uh, uh, we keep on discussing things. We are exchanging our opinions, and uh, 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 teachers uh, uh, summarizing our discussions uh, conveys uh, their knowledge to us. And uh, just one example: in uh, Poland, uh, teachers are quite autonomous and, uh, and independent in choosing methodologies for teaching with only one exception, and that is uh, uh, civic education. And the uh, curriculum um, is uh, the must, uh, or in other words, 25% uh, um, percent of all classes are to be based on the project method of teaching. So uh, this is the uh, only requirement, otherwise uh, the teacher is independent. But those methods are supposed to be those who would uh, really engage uh, uh, children and help them uh, get practical skills. And uh, certainly you had a, a broader, broader, very broad approach, and I narrowed it. Uh, you also said about oh, your group is supposed to discuss uh, um, textbooks and training materials. Well, uh, um, the point has already been made that practice is the uh, priority here, so I think uh, we think that textbooks uh, should contain the materials uh, to, to help teacher to simulate some uh, real uh, life situations. Well, those materials could be uh, um, cases, uh, some uh, situation-based uh, um, uh, um, games, uh, uh, elections, referendum, long-term project. It's uh, when uh, children are supposed to simulate uh, the work of some institutions. And uh, it could be also long-term projects when uh, children uh, uh, try to substitute for the government or for some regional bodies of power. Uh, those could be uh, the methodology textbooks uh, uh, focusing on uh, self-governance and uh, instruments of uh, oversight and supervision by uh, children. It's to be um, online uh, materials uh, and uh, some curriculum and appendixes that uh, help uh, children to better cope with self-governance uh, tasks uh, 
uh, to establish cooperation between schools and websites, electronic uh, methods uh, are also necessary. We have two opinions. Uh, those uh, could be uh, learning sites uh, when uh, some learning materials uh, post on the site, or it could be uh, websites of uh, real uh, organizations. It could be the website of the president, uh, the State Duma of the United Nations, the Moscow School for Civic and, uh, and uh, Enlightenment, any if anything. So it, it could be any type of institution. Uh, as for indicators, we have two opinions. Uh, we can use uh, quantitative uh, uh, indicators uh, to measure the quality, the number of visits of websites, uh, uh, um, use of applications. The other opinion is that there are some indicators uh, that are not measuring anything. Rather, uh, uh, they uh, should uh, measure the uh, comfort and convenience uh, of uh, uh, materials uh, for classes. So if uh, it is convenient to use those materials, uh, it's uh, the measure. Okay, so uh, you told us uh, um, um, about unconventional materials that can be used for training and learning. And uh, uh, traditionally, uh, teachers make use of textbooks, but I've met uh, such teachers who never use uh, textbooks, who prepare their own materials and hand them out to uh, students. I think uh, for the purposes of civic education, it's quite uh, feasible. It's time for us to wrap up. I admit uh, that uh, we couldn't uh, go into deep uh, details of the quality. It's only the beginning. And, uh, we now know that there are some areas uh, where we should uh, determine uh, quality standards for us, for our school. And we should also uh, choose indicators uh, to measure those standards. And if somebody from outside would like to investigate and evaluate the quality of civic education, those indicators can provide them with an objective picture. So thank you very much for your contribution for that discussion. And in conclusion, I can only say that civic education deserves our continuous effort in terms of quality. And I wish you to have uh, the civic education of the top quality. Thank you.